what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a look at the newborn howl from head to toe. And we're going to start with his normal movement. You can see right now that he's moving both arms regularly. His legs never move. And so you can see one arm moves and then the other arm moves and we call that active movement. You can also notice on his vital signs monitor that he has normal vital signs displayed right now. The very top number you see is heart rate. The next number is respiratory rate. Below that is arterial blood pressure. You would have that displayed if the baby had an art line in. We can now do pre and post ductal monitoring. We're showing you right now that the pre ductal is 93 and the post ductal is 85. Below that, the top number is the blood pressure for the arm and then the blood pressure for the leg is below that. And another really great feature is cap refill time, which just reads to the left of blood pressure. And to the left of that is the body temperature. And we have a clock on the left-hand side all the way in the far left. And if you don't want the clock displayed, you can also close it. Next, we're going to hear his cry. And he's going to move into his reduced movement. So if the baby was more depressed, for example, he would move less often. In the stable program scenarios, we try to correlate movement with vital signs. So if a baby was deteriorating, for example, as we can see, he's now completely stopped moving. You'll notice on his vital signs that his heart rate has come down. He's desaturated a little bit. The movement you see right now is called jitteriness. And we use this movement when we're trying to have you think about hypoglycemia or hypocalcemia or drug withdrawal. The movement that we see now are seizures. And I want you to realize that in the stable scenarios, the baby is programmed to have physiologic correlation when he has a seizure. Take a look at the monitor. What you see here is that the baby during a seizure is going to have his heart rate go down, his saturation is going to drop, and his blood pressure is going to go up. In addition, if you tried to bag mass ventilate the baby, you would not be able to move air. When the baby is finished having the seizure, if you're bagging him, you'll see that there is chest rise, and then the baby will show some physiologic correlation of improvement. Let's take a look at the monitor as the baby comes out of having a seizure. Cyanosis is the next feature that we're showing you. The baby's cyanosis will be centered around the face only, and as the baby gets more and more cyanotic, you're going to see blueness at the bridge of the nose. Now the baby has come back to a normal state. Here we hear the grunting respirations. And we like to use that sound to have people become more alert that the baby's respiratory status has just deteriorated. Let's take a close look at the chest now. What you're going to see is that the right chest is moving and the left chest is not. If you're not certain whether the baby's having a pneumo, one of the things that you can do is lay your whole hand over the chest and then you'll be more easily able to tell that one side is rising over the other. I'm going to show you right pneumothorax next. In right pneumothorax we only see the left chest rise. And one thing you should be aware of is that a lot of people confuse this for an active precordium. So what we ask our students to do is if they really wonder whether the baby has a pneumo, is we ask them to go through the process they would do in the unit. Turn off the lights, transluminate the baby, turn the lights back on, and then our facilitator will let you know whether or not you do have a pneumo or not, and which side the pneumo is. Uh, well, can you turn off the lights, please, Kelly? Sign a Karen King. Hey, can you come in room 12, please? We're having a little bit of trouble. 
If you're not certain whether the baby has a new or not, go ahead and dim the lights and go through that process of translumination and then you will be given the answer so that you will know whether or not you need a needle aspirate. I need to mention right now though that you should never put anything actually in the newborn house chest. Go ahead and do the whole procedure of needle aspiration up to the part where you insert the needle or the chest tube. Just simulate inserting the needle, tape the needle to the chest, attach your stopcock, attach your syringe, and start aspirating. Your facilitator will tell you whether or not you're getting air. Never give anything down the endotracheal tube. If you need to give epinephrine via the endotracheal tube, draw up the medication, call out the correct dose, and instead of instilling it in the ET tube, just discard it in the trash can or into the bed. It's important that you call out that epinephrine has been given and what dose has been given so that the facilitator can take action on their end to either improve the baby or not. The next thing we're going to do is become aware about where the pulses are in this baby. So this baby has brachial pulses on both sides and to feel the pulses it's easier if you just lift the arm up a little bit and then palpate the little pads that are in there up near the armpit. If you press too hard, you will obliterate the pulse. We can also turn the left or the right sided pulse off. So for example, if we were doing a scenario that involved a critical coarctation, we may turn off the left pulse but leave the right pulse and you can use that as part of your diagnostic evaluation. The other thing that is unique with this mannequin is that as the blood pressure gets lower and lower, the pulses get weaker and weaker. If the systolic blood pressure is less than 35, you will no longer palpate a pulse. But that does not necessarily mean that the baby's in a pulseless electrical activity rhythm because what you'll be able to do is you will still see that there's an arterial waveform and that there's an oximetry reading. If we're trying to show you pulseless electrical activity, your arterial waveform will flatline and your oximetry waveform will flatline. And instead of getting a number here, you'll get a question mark. Then you should take action to reverse pulseless electrical activity. If the baby is newly born, you'll also be able to palpate pulses at the umbilical cord. The pulses are much more easily felt if you put on an umbilical clamp first. Be certain that you don't squeeze too hard when you're feeling the pulse because it will be difficult to feel it if you press too much. We're going to see that the heart rate is going to decline now in this part of the orientation and the baby will end up at a point where we need to do CPR. We're going to demonstrate for you how to do the CPR on this mannequin. We can see here that the baby's apneic and bradycardic and the respiratory rate is reading zero. When you bag the baby, you will see, if you're giving effective ventilations, you will see that conveyed on the cardiorespiratory monitor. In addition, the rate that you're bagging is going to be picked up. We can see that the number is changing from zero as we give breaths. One thing you should know is that the head position can influence whether or not you're going to get chest rise. So if you're not successfully ventilating the baby, you have to do the same maneuvers that you would do in an infant, which is to reposition the head and even consider increasing your inflating pressure. Now we're going to show you how to coordinate chest compressions with bag mass ventilation. When you do chest compressions, find the xiphoid process and then find the internipillary line and you want to give compressions right in that space between the nipples because if you don't give compressions there then it won't register the correct rate. We're going to demonstrate for you coordinated compressions to ventilations. We're going to follow the NRP algorithm of 3 to 1. What you'll notice on the ECG monitor is that as she gives compressions the ECG reflects that there's something going on. You can see that the rhythm is no longer regular. In addition, you can also see the ventilations that are being administered.